Signs of despair in Midtown West are hard to miss. In fact, within the first 10 minutes of being on West 30th Street, our crew spotted a man removed by EMS off the sidewalk, another exposing himself, and a third suffering from an apparent mental episode. There's a humanitarian crisis unfolding on our streets. Which is precisely why council member Eric Botcher wrote to Mayor Eric Adams, appealing for more mental health services in his district along the west side of Manhattan. Well, let's switch gears back to uh, New York. We have two videos coming out here uh, of the humanitarian crisis and the crime nightmare that is going on. Uh, this is something that basically our own politicians caused. This could have been completely avoided. But the thing about it is they hate the orange man. They hate... They want, they want to maintain their control. But the thing about it is, you're starting to see the those who are responsible for this, they're beginning uh, to uh, crumble. Uh, we've seen recently um, the squad, the a AOC squad, two of their members have now lost elections. Uh, the base primaries that they will not be going on, so they've lost their seats. Uh, you know, there's another one that's coming up, which is uh, Ila Omar. Um, will she be next? That's a good question. On to there. You know, and AOC's in the background. I mean, they're 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 starting to worry. And you also here in New York, you know, you have situations where there are investigations of the mayor and other city leaders to what they've been doing lately uh, to their campaign finance laws uh, that they violated. Uh, they claim, oh, no, no, you know, and their basically uh, their partnership with other countries like Turkey and China to that situation. We've had that on there. And, you know, and the, and the way New York is looking right now, I mean, I grew up, I was born in the 60s, late 60s, grew up in the 70s, 80s, during, the, you know, when crime, you know, you, you literally didn't stay out at night. You were told, uh, basically, to uh, get home before dusk, especially if you have children with you. You not to go out, you know, because you had a drug, there was a drug problem, homeless problem, mental illness problem, prostitution problem. Uh, you know, you had... You, you name it, it was happening. You're a nation in the streets. You're a nation in buildings. You're a nation in the subway. Um, I mean, we have another video where basically one part of the laws that they used to have is still being, is being violated these days because it's been removed. You know, where it just basically you got people that are self-gratifying themselves on the streets of New York. Yeah, that's right. Right in front of everybody. I mean, this is, this is outrageous to what's going on. I mean, this is part of the mental illness and drug abuse that is going on in New York. You know, this is one of a list of things. And the thing about it is, our leaders are going like, everything's okay, you know. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, there's protests, but uh, they're all peaceful. Meanwhile, there's a fire going on behind you. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. That's okay. Things are going to be okay. You know, and, and the thing about it is, you know, you, you hear them saying, well, all this situation where they said, oh, crime is down and stuff like that. Crime is not down. Crime continues. It continues as a revolution. It continues on and on and on. You haven't stopped anything. You know, we have district attorneys releasing people back on the streets. Some of them are mentally ill. Others are just homicidal maniacs that, you know, don't belong on the street, streets of New York or any other street that they should be in jail for the things they've done. I mean, you've released people this, for, for 
certain crimes and you know and then you reduce the charges you let them out and then they commit more crimes and they end up killing somebody and then who's to blame on that and, you know they try to blame the police on that no police police hand, our hands are tied to the situation and you know when you've seen the control that's going on that they're trying i mean they're, they're, they're turning the sanitation into a um like almost like a Gestapo group when it comes to garbage on what, what is to come on that. And we're working on a story on that. But we're going to read this from the New York Post. NYC Gateway and Tourist Destination Overrun by the Mentally Ill Drug Abusers, a Humanitarian Crisis. That is correct. It is a humanitarian crisis. Unstable, strung-out homeless weirdos have swarmed large parts of Manhattan West Side littering the streets with needles, menacing locals and tourists alike, and there's no help in sight. The invasion of the homeless, mentally ill, and drug-abused people is full-blown humanitarian crisis, greeting millions of tourists and office workers who arrive in Midtown and its highly trafficked surrounding neighborhoods, wrote Councilman, Councilman Eric Botcher in a recent letter to the mayor asking for aid. Our neighborhoods need help right now he wrote the status quo cannot be allowed to continue west side wackadoos including one dead-eyed junkie wandering with a needle sticking out of his hand along 36th street near the bustling penn station uh were out in force as the post visited the neighborhoods over the past two weeks yes that whole area between penn station over to times square has become a nightmare again i remember it when i was young that, you know, you didn't go in the, those areas, especially at night, because this is what you had. You know, you have the the homeless that they're, they're in Penn Station and the drug addicts as well. It's, it's become really bad again. A bedraggle security guard who has gave his name as Fisher uh, says he sees doped up derelicts do drugs all day, all night in the public courtyard at Midtown Holiday Inn. Hotel along 8th Avenue's infamous Strip of Despair. It's crazy out here, said the bar the battle-weary Midtown security guard, age 50. They even have sex out here on the benches. They pee and defecate here. Entire swaths of the west side, including near Washington Square Park, West 4th Street Subway Station, in the West Village, and in the Garmin District, are particularly dire, Botcher wrote. Stretched thin, the NYPD precincts in the area are buried in endless calls about open drug sales and use destroyed property, menacing acts of physical and verbal intimidation, shoplifting, and more, according to Botcher. And the cops can't even arrest their way out of the crisis, he said. We have people who have been arrested 50 or 100 times without any meaningful intervention, Botcher, who represents District 3, covering the area, told The Post. At what point does anyone do anything to interrupt that cycle? Staff at the Midtown Holiday Inn, where the Post watched custodians outside clean up at least two spent needles, have resorted to turning on sprinklers in hope of washing the unruly vagrants away. That ain't going to work. But some homeless people are turning it into a sho yeah, exactly a shower experience, even using soap, as one hotel guest complained in an online review. We turned on the sprinklers on to move them, and they come inside cursing us out as Rocky Caban 45, the f hotel's front desk supervisor. They're trying to hit us and everything. We got a guard outside tr to try to stop them from coming inside. Caban pointed to a man nodding off on the benches every day. We got to go through this. I see the same people every day. I see them get picked up and go in an ambulance, and the next day they're back outside. There's a lot more to this article, and I would, as I would tell you, go ahead, go grab it on the New York Post site. But that's just a small um, piece of what is going on here. This has been going on for some, some time, whether it's the theater district, Hell's Kitchen, Times Square, Midtown North, Midtown South, you know, the Staten Island Ferry, uh, pick, a, pick a subway station in New York, you know, it, it is happening all over. This was something that was cleaned up many years ago. 
and now it's faltering over again. And it's because of politics. And then now we have illegal migrant gangs out there, the Venezuelan gangs, uh, the African gangs, we, uh, the Mexican cartel gangs uh, that are out there that are causing issues. They're, co- they're shoplifting. Uh, they're st- going into restaurants. They're going into restaurants and ripping people off. Where are the police on that? Especially the outdoor cafes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you sit in an outdoor cafe, some guy comes running up to you, grabs your watch, give me your wallet, give me everything, and, you know, they're gone. I mean, the city has been picking up, uh, because they, most of these guys are using these uh, electric bikes and mopeds. I mean, they've picked up and crushed a lot, but they still continue to get these things. Where are they getting the money from? Well, guess what? Taxpayer money. Understand that. And the thing about it is, it also affects other places in the country. Just re- recently in Polk County, Florida, you've had arrests of illegal migrants out of New York that are coming down to for prostitution. They go down to make money and to bring that money back to their um, the people running these organizations, uh, giving them back the giving them their money that they they do for crossing into the United States because they do owe them money crossing into this country. And for the amount of money that's being spent on the illegal migrants, you know, this is what's needed to help our own people. Now, you may say to yourself, well, that's kind of racist the situation. These people need help. Do they really, truly need help? Really? Truly? Think about it for a minute. Because a lot of the countries these people are coming from, I understand that there are places like in Africa, that are situations, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. But you're seeing what is going on. There are those that are being invited by our own politicians and organizations. They say, if you want a better life, come to America, cross that border illegally, and we'll take care of the rest. Yeah, that is happening. It is happening. There are advertisements in these countries that are trying to say we offer a better life here. But we're stretched thin. We can't handle this situation. And why is some of this being done? Some of them are to make money. The others are to get to continue power in the voting booth. Because you already heard... Perfect example, the gentleman that has been chosen to be the VP pick for Kamala Harris signed a bill uh, giving illegal migrants driver's licenses, which pretty much they'll be able to vote. Think about that for a minute. Take the moment and look these things up. Back when I was sick, I mean really sick. I'm still a little sick now, but back when I was sick, And I ended up at uh, Rumsey Hospital, which is Richmond University Medical Center. I was in the emergency room for a couple of days as they prepared to ship me to a uh, rehab center to rehabilitate my legs because I, you know, I had uh, I had an edema, and it got really, really bad to the point where I couldn't get up, I couldn't walk. And you may say to yourself, well, that's all the weight and stuff like that. When you have an edema, fluid gets trapped. And the amount of fluid that I had in my, in my body was really bad. Really, really bad. I'm still, I'm still healing. I mean, I'm still, uh, the skin that got damaged on there, I'm still peeling that off to this day. And you're like, oh, but yeah, it, it's taken this amount of time. But while, but getting back, while I was there, there was a homeless gentleman there for a bit, for just a little bit, and uh, I don't know what you know why he was there for it. It was the, the NYPD brought him in, and eventually he was let go. They let him go. Sometime later, and I was watching the news on this, and the only reason why I recognized it because I've seen him before is he was caught arrested for killing a pigeon I mean literally biting a pigeon 
I mean, I don't know if he would want to eat the pigeon or whatever the situation, but, you know, he literally snapped the pigeon's head. And, you know, and, and I saw him when he was in the hospital with me in the emergency room. He was across on the other side. I, I could tell he had mental issues. He was there because of the situation. The hospital let him go because there was nothing the hospital could do. And he was put back on the streets. And, you know, the NYPD let him go. And he caused issue again. I mean, this is something that is going on on a constant basis in New York City. These people need help. Whether it's the drug user, whether it's the homeless person, they all need help. Where's all the money that is supposed to be going to them? Where's it going? It's going to the illegal migrants. I mean, you, you see videos out there. I can't confirm or deny, but the, uh, you know, you have people out there showing us receipts that were found that belonged to illegal migrants. Because you know, if, you, if you're on SNAP, if you're on benefits, when you use the card itself, when the receipt comes up, it tells you what's left on your card. Someone got a hold of one, and you can see thousands and thousands of dollars on their cash benefits and their SNAP benefits. And you hear that they want to give them gift cards to this situation. And they said, oh, you know, and and then they said, oh, well, we don't like the food you're giving us and, you know, the waste of food on there. Because they have to have the certain food. Let me tell you something. If If someone is really hungry, really, truly hungry, they ain't caring if if the uh, the food the food is hal- you know halal I think it was halal done or not. They're eating it because they're hungry. They're starving to that situation. So let me know in the comments below. Let me hit the you know hit those comments. Tell me your thoughts about this. Is this happening in where you live? You know I'm here. We're here on uh, Staten Island. We do have this issue, but not as bad as it is in the city, but it is bad enough. You know, we see it on our buses here. Uh, We see it in certain areas. It's gotten bad. So let me know in the comments below. Share this video. Hit the like. And hopefully today's the day I earn your subscription. So thank you for the support. We'll see you on the next video. Be sure to check out all of our other videos here on Mad Man with the Show and Cutacast TV. Have a good week. Bye bye now. Thanks for watching, commenting, and sharing this video. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe as this helps the reach of this channel. Finally, as a content viewer, you have the ability to help support this channel as new internet laws around the world will diminish our reach and affect our sponsors. If you choose to help there are two ways, listed in the description below. The first link will lead you to a pay site where you can make a monetary donation. The second will lead you to our gear shop where you can buy shirts, mugs, and other gear. Discounts will be listed on the site. Once again thank you for watching and your support.